Our next speaker really needs no introduction. Frank Parrish um, has worked with the Science Center for 21 years, and it was really in that age class of um, scientists where actually they're now retiring. Frank has been doing all of his work in the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands and is here today to present for you foraging competition between monk seals and other apex predators. Thank you, Frank. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? I'm not retiring. Just so people know that, I got a lot of years to go. Um, uh, I have a co-author on this paper. Um, his name's Greg Marshall. He's, uh, he's been somebody I've been working with for about 10 years now. And he works with National Geographic Television, and he's pretty much the inventor, but more importantly, a, an advocate for animal-borne imaging systems. And we'll be talking about using that in this particular talk. OK, um, the reason we took this project on was that uh, we've had a problem with, uh, with monk seals. For the last 20 years, we've seen a steady decline, especially at French frigate shoals. Um, it's evident in the beach counts. If you look at the black line on this chart, you'll see that it's, uh, it's a pretty precipitous decline, and then it's, it continually, continually creeps down. But more alarming were the, uh, the pups. The number of pups born has continually creeped down as well. And um, this, when I was brought into this, I really didn't have much um, exposure to seals. Uh, I basically was out on the boat with some seal biologists and I was looking over at one of the sand islands off in the distance and I pointed up, hey, there's a, there's a big boat fender over there. And they said, no, that's not a boat fender, that's a seal. And it was really this big, round, fat, ridiculous looking thing. It was a pup. It had just been weaned, or was not at the point of being weaned. And then I figured when I started working on juveniles, we would be seeing some of that. And what we see here instead is we're seeing juveniles show up you know, after they've gone off and tried to make it on their own, they actually look like these deflated bags on the beach. Um, and so uh, there's been a whole, a whole series of investigations done by the Protected Species Division, and they've looked at disease screening and things to that effect, trying to come up with a reason for this. And all things that they've found, they just, we don't have any reason to suspect anything else. It's probably that just, they're just not getting enough to eat. So the issue becomes, you know, what is it that they're eating? Where are they finding it? What kind of conditions are they trying to obtain it in? And, and that's where, where we got brought into the picture. As I mentioned, and there's the first video. Is it, is it playing? I can't see the screen. OK, so we're, we're doing good right now. Um, basically, the object of Critter Cam in this circumstance was to determine what the primary foraging habitat was and what the prey items were. Um, and we also want to look at the community from a seal's perspective, okay? And that's something that's very unique here, that basically the seals are guiding what our investigation is going to be. So it's a very much an in situ or underwater focus uh, approach. The, uh, the camera is, um, ranges from being this big down to that big. Uh, you know, we, we uh, have a, a computer control device in there that allows us to set the sampling. We have depth switches in there to make sure that it doesn't sample on the surface or it doesn't sample, you know, while it's up on the beach. Uh, it has uh, 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 depth recording devices, it has temperature recording devices, and it has night vision. As you can see right there, this is a night vision image that the seal was down there in the middle of the night, and these are the kinds of things that it is encountering. Um, this has been going on for about 10 years. Uh, we've had a bunch of prior findings that have come out of this. Um, as I said, things that we've found have included uh, identifying the deep and subphotic foraging habitats. Uh, we've estimated the juvenile feeding success, and we've uh, identified potential prey links with, uh, with oceanography. I guess what I want to convey with this slide is that really we've come to use Critter Cam as a compass. It's really a tool in which we can put it on the seal. The seal goes out there, and it starts to identify important habitats or different areas, 
And then we can start to bring the range of tools that we have always rely on, be it trawls, conventional fishery science, you know, survey techniques, and we can apply it in the right areas. So really, in a lot of respects, the SEAL is directing how our research should be, should be approached. And, and we've had really good success, and we've had a nice, uh, nice line of publications come out of this. So for when we're talking about competition here, we'll be talking about French frigate shoals. That's where all this critter cam work has been done. The Red Star and French frigate shoals, the north end of the atolls, where we've done all the instrumentation. There's a red line that kind of circles the neighboring banks. It's very clear that they also are visiting the neighboring banks, and we're seeing it on the cameras. I just want to give you a sense of kind of a, a ballpark area that we're talking about in this study. Um, the kinds of predators that we're going to see, we're going to see more of them. But you can see these are the, the alua down below on the lower slide. You can see the head of the seal you know, from the camera mount. You can see the, the, the predators that they swim with out there. All right, so when it comes to sampling, we put out 42 seals. 33 of them were adult males. Uh, nine of them were juveniles. We would have liked more juveniles, but in the end, we were developing the camera small enough to use on the juveniles, and that's why they're, they're not represented as much as the adults were. We usually avoid the females for obvious reasons. They're, they're the reproductive potential, and we don't want to cr create any disturbance associated with that. So we got a total of 69 hours of recorded video. About 16 of those hours were at night. So we set the computer to sample about 1.5 minutes every 15 minutes while underwater, while it's not on land, you know, so it's not sampling at night if we didn't have a night vision system. So that can give you like two and a half days to five days of surveillance depending on what the seal does. Um, we identified the type and the maximum number of predators seen in any video segment, and we scored the behavior of the predators in relation to the seal's behavior. So this is it. This is, the, this is our, our usual suspects for the seals when they're out there swimming around. Um, I'll just go from the top down. We've got six of them, and they can be divided into three categories. Basically, it's jacks, snappers, and sharks. Uh, if we go from the top, the one that they encountered the most often, it's the alua, Karen Signoblis, the white alua. And uh, then go down below that, the next one that they encountered most often was uh, uku, uh, the aprion. Then we have a, a category that's just carcarinated sharks. We have a hard time identifying the sharks down there. They're usually at distance. They're usually moving quickly, and so we just list them as carcarinids. Uh, if it were a tiger shark, we'd recognize that. We didn't see that, so we didn't list that. And then we have another type of jack, which is the kahala. And then you can see we, we, we separated this trianodon, this white tip reef shark out, and that was because typically they were encountered while the seals were sleeping inside of caves underwater, and so they'd come in and just rest down in the area. So they, we just we acknowledged them, but they weren't a big deal. And, and the minority was definitely the, uh, the omilu at the bottom, which is the uh, carynx melampigus. What you want to look at here, though, is you want to look at the max sizes on these fish. You can see at the top, at Karen Signobulus, it can get up to 1.65 meters. Every one of these fish at terminal size is roughly about a meter okay, in size. And, and that's, that's stretching it for melon pikes. But you've got to remember, this is the northwestern Hawaiian Islands. Everything tends to be at its adult size. You, you, you get to your adult size as fast as you can, or you may not make it. So, so my point is that these predators that are out there, when they, they're encountered, they're usually at their max size, and that when we're talking about something that's a meter in length to two meters in length, this is the competitor that you might have to interact with. And it means a different thing if you're an adult seal versus being a juvenile seal, and that's an important consideration. Okay, so now the dangerous part. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna just show you some video of uh, different types of competition. Is it playing? Okay, very good. Uh, this is the escort behavior. This is an image that's being shot from the back of the seal. And if you look in front of the seal, you'll see there's another seal. So this is a female seal being pursued by an adult male, probably not for any other interest than mating. Uh, we've got the uh, shark escorting the female seal in front of it. You can see that. And then you also saw the two big alua that were escorting it as well. Um, that's just classic escort behavior. The seal goes out, it swims around, and you have the animals following them. And if you've gone up in the northwestern one island, if you've done any diving, and you're interacting with the bottom, you're escorted. You typically will have a jack or something come in and do an escort with you. So let's go to the next one, which is basically I'm calling an in-face behavior. As soon as the seal puts its nose down on the bottom, uh, that's a very exciting thing for the predators. And the predators will come in and they'll take a look. And here you can see we have a big school of kahala. We have a very large uh, white alua there. And off in the background you can see we have the snappers. The only thing I didn't see in this segment is a shark. And it might have been out of the, out of, out of the scene. But basically whenever they put their head down, there's a, there's, there's the, the escort closes in and gets very close to the seal. Um, feeding. Ultimately here we have a seal that's trying to feed. Um, it's, it's trying to dislodge this rock, move it, and shift it around. You can see the, the allure going after 
the prey items there. They're trying to pick up the individual item that the seal's dislodging from under the rock. Here's the key. These predators are very effective, very fast, and very capable. But what they can't do is they can't flush the prey as well as the seal can. The seal is capable of flushing the prey. That is the resource that the seal presents to the predators, is they're able to actually follow these seals, and the seals are able to spook out prey items they couldn't otherwise get. Uh, finally, stealing. Um, that was the minority. This is, this is the, the uh, segment that gets seen a lot. It's the seal has got a fish in its mouth right now, and this shark is, is basically uh, bumping it or ramming it, trying to dislodge the, the fish from its mouth. He's not interested particularly in the seal, other than the fact that it, he's got a fish in his mouth. And this is an adult seal. He, he handles it pretty well. He could have he left the bottom immediately. He just tried to maintain position. Had it been a juvenile seal, it would have been interesting to know what happened. It might have ended up differently. He might have actually lost the fish. Okay, so if we look at the competition behaviors and we break it down by my categories of jacks, sharks, and snappers, you can see the ajacks, you know, which were the highest number, represent the greatest amount of escort, but escort behavior in all these other categories is proportionally high. If you look at the in-face behavior, basically the jacks, again, they, they get in there and they're, they're tight. When we start talking about feeding, the other groups kind of drop away. There doesn't seem to be much attempt to try and get the same prey item that we see with the snappers and with the sharks. The jacks, though, they are the ones that basically are in there, it's particularly the white alua and the kahala are in there trying to, to, to get, get a free meal. And stealing, it's, it's the minority, although we did see some behavior that suggests that maybe sharks, if they're large enough, might actually try and intimidate the, the seal out of its prey. Location, uh, I just broke it down by location here. You've got the atoll, you've got the bank, and you've got the ocean. If you look here, there's this big open category, um, the, if you will, the, um, the histogram bar that's, that's not shaded. That just tells you the amount of hours that were being spent out in the ocean. If you look at the atoll, there were some 42, or 42 seals that stayed within the atoll for some period of time and gave us nearly 30 hours. And you can see there really weren't many predators there. We really didn't have many. But as soon as you start going over to the bank, which is just 30 miles away, you know, the only nine seals spent time over there giving us less than probably five, six hours, but all of them were basically constantly dealing with it. So there was a reason to go to that bank. You had to deal with the, you had to deal with the predators, but you, you went there anyway. So they were probably getting success, irrespective of the fact that the, there were other competitors there. And the ocean, we had some hours there, and we really didn't see many predators out in the ocean. And that means blue water. There's no bottom or anything. They're just doing, a, they're just doing channel transits, or they're out in blue water making dives down into subphotic depths. OK. Predator surveys. Um, I was just looking at the numbers of the fish that I was seeing. I was trying to think about it in the context of my activities when I'm out there swimming and diving and what other people have done. These are just visual surveys uh, that were done by divers in the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands. They include the belt transect, the point count, the towed diver survey. And I just put the critter cam on the bottom just to kind of give you a sense. And they include both the reef and the bank. And if you look in the right-hand column, and you just look at those numbers, they range from 42 to 132 individuals per hectare. And you try and apply some kind of a uh, an area base on the critter cam, you know, we're anywhere from being, you know, consistent with that with like 39 uh, individuals per hectare to if you move to the banks to an absurd number that's an order of magnitude larger. So the point is that when these animals are down there and the predators are there, there's a huge behavioral activity happening here and it attracts the, the predators and the, the in close to the seals. And what you see on the screen has everything to do with the area they're going and what it is the seals choosing to do while they're down there. Uh, it also might have some relevance to us and when we do our fish surveys. When we're out there doing our fish surveys and we're counting our, our predators, we may be changing the densities of what we actually see just because the predators are down there cruising along. We're the closest thing they've got to a seal, so they come and take a look at us. Quite the opposite from what you get in the main islands. So when you do your comparisons, what does that mean? And that's, that's a different talk entirely. Um, if we look at the depth here, the seals went anywhere from up you know, in the ultimate shallows way down to 500 meters. I truncated it here at 300 just because it was getting ridiculously long. Um, one of the things I want to show here is you can see there's a spike in the seal activity, which is the gray area, uh, about 60 meters. And then around 60 meters, that's where we started seeing the feeding. The black is, uh, is where we were encountering predators. And what I want to point out is, yeah, about the place where the feeding was occurring, was the, uh, the same place we were having the spike with the predators. But more interesting is the predators weren't represented at all, not once, below 100 meters. 
which I think is pretty cool. If you look at where the seals feed, there's some intermittent feeding until you start getting down to about that 60 meters, and then the seals manage to forage all the way deeper, which is an interesting, interesting idea, the concept that do you feed deeper just to not have to deal with the nuisance of having competitors around? And that's something we would have to look at in the future. So in summary, the competition between seals and other predators occurs not only for the same prey. We've actually had a lot of conversations about that. Well, this is eating the same thing that that's eating. Well, in this certain circumstance, we're talking about the competition is for the same prey specific item. I want that fish, and he's going after that fish. So that's a pretty exciting thing. It actually starts getting us into the realm of is there actually a potential for kleptoparasitism? I can't say that we saw it, but is there a potential for it? Um, jacks are the primary com competitor from what we've seen. Uh, the competition is most evident on the neighboring banks. It gives me the sense that the seals that are going over there are primarily adult males, well, adults, I should say, and they probably have the ability and the skill to be able to handle chipping out some prey in that, in that environment. It may be that the young seals that are at French Frigate are having a harder time finding and they can't get to the rich grounds and it might be that these, these competitors are, are a significant consideration in, in, in how, they, how, they, how they get their food. And then the last thing is that uh, no predators were seen deeper than 100 meters, which I think is kind of an interesting idea. Amy Baco Taylor was down in a submarine at 500 meters and she encountered these guys. There was at least two of them. And they came up and looked right in the submarine. And they, in this circumstance, what they're doing is they're using the light field of the submarine to look around for prey. So, I mean, 500 meters, that's bloody deep to be going down to get something to eat when you think about all the, the areas that are, that are shallower. But it may very well be that you know, the seals are progressively working deeper and deeper for a number of reasons, but one of them might be of competition with predators. And so that's where we're going to go with it in the future. We're going we're to focus on trying to to, uh, to, to look at some of those more deeper feeding uh, behaviors. And then finally, I'd like to acknowledge the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation. Uh, they gave money to National Geographic to basically build the cameras small enough for us to be able to put them on juveniles and made these, made these projects possible. Also, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has supported us out at Turn Island in an incredible way for 10 years and very much has been an advocate for this research and we're indebted to them. And then the Hawaii Undersea Research Laboratory has been working with us extensively on this, and, and uh, they show a lot of excitement in this project, so they're a pleasure to work with. And that's all I've got. I'm happy to take any questions. You okay? Okay, so the question, the question I'm going to summarize it as I can. So you're saying that the question was, is culling jacks a viable option for mitigating this competition? And Certainly, it's, it's a consideration in the sense that there is some competition. I would like to look at some of the competitions kind of in other areas of the archipelago to kind of get a sense if this is a wide thing. Everything was done at French Frigate Shoals, and French Frigate Shoals seems to be kind of unique. That said, before I'd ever start the culling of the competition, we're moving down the line of trying to do some retrospective modeling to look at, you know, is the jack population has it been enhanced at all? Did we actually have situations where maybe we've had discards and throwbacks associated with previous fisheries that, you know, that there is an enhancement, there is a reason for that? And, and so before I would even address that question, I would go back and say, you know, what is the, what is the point in which we make that decision? But certainly it's a viable scenario. Ask was, are we going to do critter cam deployments in the main islands? And the answer is yes to that. Uh, this question is here, did we factor in competition with humans such as bottom fishing? And, First of all, this isn't the answer. This is one, one segment of the pressures that the SEALs have to deal with. And I think that, uh, yeah, absolutely, we have, we have a situation where we have an overlap between the SEALs foraging and bottom fishing, and we've had a number of studies that have identified that. And it is, it is a consideration, and the question really is, having that this 100-meter framework where you have all the predators focusing their activity and the SEALs are now going below it, just below it is the bottom fish complex. And so it would be interesting to see where that goes. It's certainly, it's certainly one of the competing measures as to whether you know, it's any one of these things. It's all of these things. It's everything that we've got going at one time. That's it. Thank you, Frank. It's, it's really research such as the work that Frank is doing that's helping to inform management um, of monk seal, the declining monk seal population in northwestern Hawaiian Islands. We rely considerably on um, expertise such as Frank. Papa, na na
Ohugani ohi awehi wa no honuai. Oh, 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 Mai ho o ha mau i tale o kale hua pane, a pane mai pahai ke i a mamu e.